skies are going to be a permanent fixture. Till I find a way to get Grigor out of here. Axe is back and with a lot of security and he couldn't come back a moment too soon because you know how much my channel needs billions. It's the only way we get views. No Axe, no AK. And I know at least some of you are around back last year when we were making billions videos all the time. If you haven't seen those, I'll link to them up above. We did some cool stuff though on like intuition and trading, anti-fragility with Nassim Taleb, all concepts covered in billions. And now we're finally back. Yes, thank you. I love this show. And I'm so excited for that Axe Chuck team up that's coming this season but today's topic is how important it is to choose the right clients in the money management business now there's gonna be some spoilers obviously but i mean it's been almost a week right plus showtime has the first episode of season four for free you can watch it on youtube you should go do that so in the beginning of the season the first thing we see is x surrounded by security and why it's because he chose the wrong client this guy gregor or Grigor with the worst Russian accent I've heard. I don't know what that is, but he's a scary dude with, I think that accent makes him scarier. Look at him about to jump into bed together. But this was actually a sticking point for Taylor. Like she didn't want to get money from a guy like this, a Russian oligarch, a bad dude. Axe needed the money though. So he got the money and then it went south. And now he's got this dangerous, dangerous oligarch who he's got to go head to head with. Now, obviously this is a very dramatic case of picking the wrong client, but of course we need it to be dramatic because otherwise why would we be watching but the whole client management aspect of money management is just not respected by people that aren't in the business because a lot of the people who want to get into the business they want to become traders they want to become a billionaire like x they forget how much of the job is actually client management and raising funds that i would actually say is a majority of the job trading is a small part and the issue is when you get into bed with the wrong client they are going to eat up all your time so in a normal scenario they're going to be calling you all the time asking how their money is doing making stupid requests they're just gonna be all up in your stuff not letting you do your job even though they paid you to do the job it's very annoying and in the worst case you're gonna be like axe messing around with this guy it's scary ass dude i'll give you an example that happened to a family relative of mine he was a portfolio manager so he was managing the money of this old white lady who was divorced from this fortune 500 ceo so she got a bunch of money in the divorce settlement like tens of millions but with the first few years after that divorce she didn't have anyone to manage it so she went from like 20 million or whatever she had to 2 million then she came to my relative who took that money way back up to 20 million again in the markets so things were good for a while you know over those years when the money returned but eventually this uh mexican dude shows up in this lady's life and all of a sudden you got this like 30 maybe he was 40 year old mexican dude dating this rich like 65 year old white lady and i remember i was a kid during this time and i actually met them and even back then i was like no this doesn't look right <laughs> but this dude he knew what he was doing because he was divorced right but he had like seven kids or something and eventually he was with this lady for so long he married her they got married and everything he moved his seven kids over from mexico and his ex-wife and they all lived in the house with the new old Old, rich white lady and i'm laughing but this is terrible actually so how does this relate to the money management well this mexican dude was a shaman yeah he spoke to spirits so eventually you know he's a smart dude he gets into this lady's finances his new wife you know they're married now and they go back to this portfolio manager relative of mine who's been managing this lady's money successfully for years but this guy comes and he says you know what i want to put all our money in gold and my relatives like what what the hell why that doesn't make any sense he said that he was doing his shaman dancing because he would take a stick and like dance around stuff so he was doing that dancing and the spirits came down to him and they said put all your money in gold so my relative the uh, portfolio manager is like all right what, what am I supposed to do with this? And the lady, the old rich white lady, she's down with it. Cause that's her new husband. You know, he's got her wrapped up and long story short, even though this story was so long already, the relationship eventually broke apart, not between the old lady and the young Mexican dude, but between them and my relative, the portfolio manager, because you couldn't manage money like that. You can't do it based off spirits. And this was a lot of money. And I don't know what happened to them now. I assume they lost it all investing like that, but damn. And this didn't just happen right away, right? There was a period of time where my relative was dealing with this just day in and day out calls and trying to convince them otherwise and they're going back and forth then you got the mexican dude in there with the spirits and the amount of assets under management that he eventually lost i mean it sucked but that's what happens i mean client management is not easy look at how much time ax spends with gregor on his ass if you don't pick the right clients you're gonna get screwed and that same relative and other portfolio managers i talked to that's why they're so selective when you get to a certain level you would hope that you're not out there begging for assets because if you are begging it then you're just gonna take it from whoever just like ax had to 
right? He was in a bad situation and needed that Gregor's capital to be the first investor so other people would throw money in. That was last season, right? And honestly, the dream and the goal for a lot of portfolio managers, at least the really smart ones, is to just have a family office. So if you have a family office, you don't have any outside capital. It's all your own capital. So it's something that really rich families create or single individuals, like Stan Druckenmiller has his family office. And once you're a family office, you don't have all those compliance things that you got to do because it's just your money. So you don't got the SEC on you like Axe always does. You don't got any of the regulators on you. Now in billions though, as we've seen, every mention of a family office has been like shrouded in shame. No one wants to do it. You know, Axe didn't want to convert to a family office. Stephen Birch, if you remember him, he was forced to convert to a family office. That was part of his plea deal with the US Attorney's Office. I think this is the exact scene actually. After he was caught for that insider trading, he had to become a family office to avoid that prison term. So there's a few reasons in this show why no one wants to become a family office. First is because of ego, which obviously is the propelling force of everything that goes on in this show. And it's awesome. I mean, we love it, right? But the prestige of a family office is not as much as the prestige of a hedge fund because you don't have that outside money. You're not swinging as big of a book. You're not swinging as many billions in the market. So you're not considered a player, even though no one would say anything like that about a guy like Stan Druckenmiller, right? Who's an absolute legend and is in a family office. I mean, he wasn't there his whole entire career, but he is now. And the second reason why someone would not want a family office is because you lose that 2% management fee. So if you're in a hedge fund, you get 2% of the assets that you're trading with every year. It's the management fee. And then you get a performance bonus too. That's the two and 20 model, which I'll discuss in a future video, which if you want to see that, I'm actually going to do that next. Subscribe to this channel and hit that bell. But anyway, a lot of hedge fund managers that aren't that good, they make most of their money off that 2%. And 2% sounds like a little, right? But think about if you have billions and billions of dollars under management, then that 2% is a lot. So the only time you could really go into a family office where you can afford to not have that management fee is if you have billions of dollars yourself. And I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but one of the greatest things about the family office, other than the fewer regulations, is the fact that you don't have clients anymore. And that's the dream of the best guys in the business who don't have that ego driving them. They don't want to deal with any outside money because it's such a hassle. You got shamans and spirits and Russian oligarchs. And you saw that first episode, right? What happened to Wags with that Arab sovereign wealth fund? They roofied him. I don't know what that was. It was a super roofie. And then they were in their consulate, so you couldn't do anything. I mean, who's trying to play around with those types of clients? Nope, you don't want that. That's why the best traders, their goal is to just manage their own money. Forget about everybody else. But you usually have to take on AUM in the beginning because you need to use that to build up your own wealth so you could eventually go solo. Unless, of course, you are the guys in billions driven by ego, which if you are driven by ego a bit, make sure you download this trading FOMO guide. Now, the guide is geared towards stopping your FOMO in trading, but you can also use the same tips and tricks to help control your ego and any other emotions in the market, which, as you've seen, have really influenced acts to do some crazy stuff. But this guide will help you with that if you're a trader or investor. And it's free. All you got to do is put in your email and I'll send it to you. The link to get to this page is up above or down below in the description and comments as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get an email notification for when our next Billions video comes out. We're going to analyze a lot of the stuff from Billions. It's a great show. I love it. And we're also publishing videos every single day on market and business topics. So if you like Billions, I think you're going to like the other stuff here too. So definitely hit subscribe and hang out with us. I'll see you in the next video. Stay foul about there. Bye.